one man's dream put Batley on the map. His name was James Corrigan. From Shirley Bassey to the Bachelors, Batley Variety Club sprinkled stardust over the small mill town in Yorkshire. The club opened on the 26th of March 1967. Maureen Prest, the promotions manager of the club, has documented the wonderful story of James Corrigan in her book, The King of Clubs. They might be a bit surprised what they read, but what they do read will be the truth from someone who knows, who was there and lived through it all. When the Batley Variety Club closed, it reopened as a crumpet club and then would later become the Frontier. The Frontier has now closed and it has now reopened as JD Gyms. Not forgetting for one moment the place in history this building has in Batley. And thank you, JD Gyms. I wish you every success and I'm going to cut the ribbon to declare it open. Today, the 16th of May 2024, is the unveiling ceremony of a blue plaque for James Corrigan. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this afternoon, I'd like to welcome to the microphone Christine Padwick from the British Musical Society who's going to set off the events today. Thank you, thank you. Uh, first of all I'd like to thank the Fran Haywood uh, trio for a, a wonderful start to such to such a special day today. I am, I am, as you heard, uh, Christine Padwick from the British Music Hall Society, and we are delighted to be here today, the 16th of May, on what is Music Hall and Variety Day, as it is every year and my colleague and vice chair Alison Young have been working for some time with Maureen Prest uh, to make this day to make this day happen and uh, uh, what a, a great day it, it is we have been um, we've been liaising in all sorts of ways the Maureen uh, Maureen Fork juggling too many things here Maureen's book uh, King of Clubs here uh, tells the full story of James Corrigan and the Batley Variety Club and really it's an extraordinary read. Uh, I really very much enjoyed it and it is, a, it is a very good read and if you have one with you Maureen will be signing some books and if you don't have one with you there are some for sale at cut price because it is such a special event today. <laughs> And the British Music Hall Society, which was founded in 1963, just ahead of Batley Variety Club opening in 1967. And we do celebrate all things music hall and variety. And so it is with great pleasure that we are here today. And we started Music Hall and Variety Day to commemorate our late president, Roy Hudson. 
birthday, he would have been 88 today. I would like to uh, welcome some special guests we have today. We have the Deputy Mayor of Kirk Lees here today, Noshin Dad, and I think we're also going to welcome the Member of Parliament for um, Bat oh, oh, good for, for Batley and Spen, marvellous. It's Kim Ledbetter who has joined us. Thank you so much again for coming uh, to what must be a, a very uh, busy time of year for you. And also huge welcome to the Mayor of West Yorkshire, who too is here uh, somewhere. And so thank you to for coming and actually thank you to all of you for coming today otherwise Maureen and I would look like a right couple of nits if it was just just the two of us here and I would now uh, like to introduce uh, uh, to you the instigator and the driving force the real driving force behind this plaque and this day author and past promotions manager to Batley Variety Club Maureen Thank you. Thank you and thank you all for coming today. It's such a wonderful turnout and I know it's not for me, but for James Corrigan, the legend that was Batley Variety Club. I have a few messages that I want to read out, but first of all, I have to tell you that James's family are here. Give us a wave so we all can see. There you go. They're very special and I love them all. Right, I have messages from artists who have appeared here. So I've got to read these out to you. Neil Sadaka, I have wonderful memories of Batley Variety Club and the Corrigans. <laughs> <clears throat> they were very kind to me and supportive of my music during my Hunger Years period. The audiences were some of the greatest I've ever played for. This plaque is well deserved and overdue. I honour a great man and his wife, Betty. Love to all, Neil Sadaka. The next one is from Declan Cluskin, he of The Bachelors. To Maureen and all British music hall folk, The Bachelors adored the idea of Battle Variety Club. The day we laid the foundation stone was magical. James and Betty paraded the three of us through the town of Battle in a convertible American car. Uh, proud to say, we were the top of the bill for the first show. <clears throat> now I've lost my place. The club was a trailblazer. James showed the world of show business how to do it. How to have the biggest stars and yes, how to give them the best dressing rooms. Have a lovely day. Lots of love, Deck. Still a bachelor. We haven't done. Now this one is from Cliff Richard. The Battle Variety Club was the place to play in those early years when the offer came to play to play in this club. I jumped at it. The northern audiences were terrific. The staff were friendly and James a gentleman. So very welcoming. Did I like being there? Yes, I absolutely did. Signed, Cliff. <laughs> this is a quote from the Queen of Batley. And it's not me. <laughs> it's Shirley Bassey. We had tremendous audiences at Batley for three week runs. James, always, always the joker, asked me if I'd like to go for dinner one evening. I accepted and we arranged for the Friday after the show. 
I got all dressed up in a mink jacket and a cocktail gown. He took me to a fish and chip takeaway. <laughs> when the opposition approached me to play other venues, I refused. I liked James Corrigan. He made the whole thing happen. He was special. Dame Shirley Bassey. <laughs> it doesn't get much better. <laughs> Right now, this is from me. <coughs> My thanks to the British Music Hall Society for making today possible and acknowledging the great contribution James Corrigan made to the world of show business, giving his hometown of Batley a brand new image. It was in the swinging 60s when the 60s swung past Batley and the hard-working people of the North. Batley was back then a grimy mill town. Glamorous it was not. Ladies and gentlemen, you are standing on what was, many years ago, a disused sewerage works. This ground was the start of the amazing story of Batley Variety Club. It took an overdose of imagination to turn this piece of land into the biggest club in Western Europe. That was the vision of one man who reached for the stars and accidentally captured the moon. Just once in a lifetime, someone comes along and makes a difference. For Batley, that man was James Lord Corrigan. It would be remiss of me not to mention his wife, Betty who brought into James' dream of the club. Betty designed the interior. As a child, Betty had been taken to a theatre with pillars. Alas, poor Betty saw nothing of the show. But she never forgot the experience. And when this building was being erected, she made sure there were no pillars. James' childhood had been greatly influenced by his grandfather, a showman of note, who taught James well. His granddad always gave him good advice, and to the young James, he told him, you must always give value for money. Back in those days, money was hard earned. Always go where the chimney pots are. Look around, folks. You'll find plenty of chimney pots around here. The club was built in 12 short weeks. Contracts had been signed to engage the top artists for the opening date, which is Easter Sunday, 1967. The bachelors were booked for the opening night. There could be no delays. When it looked like de uh, deadlines were in danger of being missed, James had floodlights erected and the works continued day and night. The paint was hardly dry. The public queued around the building and down the road to gain access to the club, confirming James's belief that the wildest of dreams can come true. After all that now, I think it's time I ask our guest of honor, the wonderful, talented, funny, Mr. Billy Pierce. Bless you, Lord. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. I think Maureen got it mixed up. She thinks I'm Bobby Gavro. <laughs> it's great to be here. Are you enjoying it so far? Yeah. Anybody see me in the pantomime? Yeah. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> I did pantomime with Christopher Biggins. I wanted to do Cinderella, but he was right up here with Aladdin. Anyway, it's great to be It's great to be here. I nearly didn't come, to be honest. I nearly didn't come because I've been right poorly. I've been right poorly. I went to see the doctor this morning and he's give me some tablets and I've got to take them for the rest of my life. And he's only given me two. <laughs> so today is my last day. I said I swallowed a peanut. He said, well, eat some chocolate and it'll come out a treat. I said, I said, I keep thinking that I am a moth. He said, well, you shouldn't be seeing me. You should be seeing a psychiatrist. I said, I was on my way there when I saw your light on. 
But it's great to be here tonight to see all these people turning up for this wonderful, wonderful occasion. I'm very honoured and flattered to be here to, uh, to, to pull that string in a minute. And uh, so it's very kind of you to all turn up. I've seen some old faces here that I haven't seen for a long time. There's lots of people who are connected more than I was with uh, Batley Variety Club, the wonderful Batley Variety Club. And there's uh, Karen Clegg, who was Alan Clegg's daughter, and, and, and Maureen was talking about, yes, talking about um, the paint not being dry and all that, and that were her dad. And she's here with her daughter, which makes me feel how old I am. Um, and, and it, I am getting old. If it's in aching, broken, or missing, it's leaking. And, um, <laughs> and we've got Patty Gold over there, who was in Cool Breeze, and she was resident here. Stuart Atkin, who was the band leader here. And we've got Bernie Clifton, the wonderful Bernie Clifton. Bless him, there he is. <laughs> Look at him now. <laughs> uh, uh, it's not too loud, is it? I don't mean me, I mean his jacket. Um, so if I've forgotten anybody, but there is loads of people there. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. It's nice to see all these. Uh, you know, I did a club, uh, a club other night. There were only 14 people. That's all that come to see me, only 14 people. <gasps> Yeah, the manager said, don't worry, Billy, there's a coach coming soon. And when it came, they all got around and went. Because <laughs> that's what I do for a living now. I just go around shutting clubs. Yes. <laughs> there was a fella on before me. Other night, it was so bad. It was so bad. They were still booing him while I were on. Yep. <laughs> I think it was from Lancashire. It was, it was a female impersonator. I think it was from Lancashire because he had a wig and a dress. <laughs> A wig and a dress. <laughs> oh, but it's, <laughs> it's a wonderful, wonderful honour for me to be here today. I'm very proud. I feel like a bit of an imposter, really, because, uh, you know, I, I shouldn't be here because I came to Batley. Batley meant a lot of, lot to me because in them days, it was so important to be able to, And I was just doing working men's clubs in a double act called the Stewart Brothers. And uh, I came here 50 years ago and we used to do three spots in the working men's clubs and so we had to do about 25 minutes on this stage here and we put all our best bits in. Well, I were coming out absolutely knackered because we were doing all this energetic, I were doing backflips and tap dancing and playing all, all instruments and I came off and I looked and the co comedian went on. I can't remember his name, but he just stood and talked. And when we were on, only about half the audience paid any attention to us whatsoever. They were all waiting for their soup in a basket. And um, so we, we went on, nobody were paying attention, but the comic went on and everybody was listening to him. He had it all, all the audience eating out of his hand and I thought, I'm going wrong here somewhere. I need to do comedy. And that's how it all started here at the wonderful Batley Variety Club. And also what I've got to tell you is uh, years later, I managed to get in the number one dressing room that I'd never ever seen. And I looked at the toilet and I, all I could think about was Shirley Bassey having a wee in it. <laughs> Roy Orbison, the Everly brothers, one drank Everly and the other one smoked Everly. <laughs> But they were absolutely wonderful, wonderful, wonderful times. So it's wonderful to be here. Uh, and, and it's cheered me up because I've had a rotten day. I, I set the alarm for eight and there's only three of us. And um, I woke up grumpy. I took her a cup of tea. And um, I went to the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham and uh, I didn't have a ticket and I was sneaking in and the security man stopped me. He said, are you a pole vaulter? I said, no. I'm English and my name's not Walter. <laughs> but what's the difference between a kangaroo and a kangaroo? A kangaroo lives in Australia and a kangaroo is a Geordie stuck in a lift. <laughs> what do you call a hen looking at a lettuce? Chicken Caesar salad. And jokes about white sugar are rare. Jokes about brown sugar, dem are rarer. <laughs> Did you hear about the teetotal virgin that preferred men to liquor? Uh, sorry, sorry, I won't do any more of them. <laughs> I went in a bakery in Scotland. I went in a bakery in Scotland and the lady said, can I help you? I said, I hope so. Is that a custard or a meringue? She said, you're not wrong, it's a custard. <laughs> I said, is that a custard or I'm a, or I'm a, I'm a, I'm a never mind. I've got a Scottish friend, I've got a Scottish friend. 
he's getting married next week. I rang him up this morning. I said, what are you going to be getting married in? He said, me? I'm going to be getting married in the full traditional Scottish outfit, including the kilt. I said, what's the tartan? He said, she will be in white. There's some very, very attractive ladies here. Look at all these ladies. Hello, ladies. Hello, ladies. Hello, gorgeous. Hello, beautiful. Hello, stunning. Hello, rubbishing. Thanks for coming, love. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. I'm a comedian. I'm the only one from the 80s that haven't been arrested. <clears throat> Yet. <laughs> Bless you, loves. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm sorry if I've gone on too long, but thank you so much for turning up to this wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Thank you to Maureen for organising it all, and thanks for all the people that have turned up. And if I've forgotten anybody that's here, I do apologise. So now, is it my turn now to open this? Oh, it's wonderful. I can't believe I'm doing this, uh, because all the people that have been here, I think, uh, in the past, are more deserving than I am, but I'm the only one that's still alive. <laughs> So I'm now going to... It's my pleasure and a joy, and I'm very proud and humbled to be asked to do this. And thank you for asking me, Maureen. And I'm going to open that now. Don't pull that one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, we've got a drum roll. Bless you, loves. Don't you think the fellas are brilliant? Give them a big cheer, them fellas. They're great. Thank you so much. Right, here we go. For Mr. James Corrigan. A wonderful, wonderful man. Thank you so much. James Corrigan, absolutely tremendous. Come on, let's hear it. Give him a big cheer. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. Is, is this Crime Watch? Absolutely. Yeah, and am I one of the guilty ones or just an alleged, an, an alleged perpetrator? Can I just say that coming here today is a fantastic experience because uh, more than 50 years ago, 1971, Battle Variety Club changed my life. I came on, I was part of the Clubland Command show. Barney Colohan was in the audience. Barney was, of course, ran the good old days from the City Varieties for BBC TV. Ultimately, I appeared on the good old days and then things started to happen because so did Les Dawson. And Les Dawson took me to one side and he gave me a proper telling off. That's the best way I can describe it. Because all I was doing was other people's acts. And he, he said, what do you like to do? And I said, well, I love doing visual comedy. And he said, well, go out, Bernie, and be a visual comic. And thanks to Batley Variety Club and Barney Cole and, and Les Dawson, my life changed. And it all happened here that night in 1971. How can that happen? Because I'm only 43. So there's a lot of people here today with uh, connections to Batley Variety Club, but you have a special connection. Um, yes, we do. We're his children. <laughs> three out of four. Yeah, there's four of us in total and we're three. What's your earliest memories then of the Battle of Variety Clubs? Um, we just, I just remember personally when I was a little girl and you'd always hear stories amongst the family about back in the day at the Batley Variety Club. So obviously it was before we were born, um, but we'd always hear the family talk about stories and we always grew up listening to those stories. It was my dad and his wife before um, he met my mum, so it was obviously before his relationship with her, but we still you know, appreciate what it was about, so even though it was years before we were born, so yeah. Fantastic, and today then, how does today make you feel? Well, we're very proud of my dad, for what he's achieved in his life, absolutely amazing, and the turnout's absolutely amazing as well. Hello, hi, hi. Right. So what, what's your feelings about today then? What's your earliest memories of the Battle of Variety Club? 
Uh, well, my feelings are, I've got mixed feelings. It's a bit like uh, watching your mother-in-law drive off a cliff in your brand new Mercedes. But um, no, I, I'm happy to be here and delighted and honoured and humbled that I've been asked because there's far more well-known people than I ever have. But I do have a close connection. So it is mixed feelings because I feel sad that it's gone as well because it was a very important part of a, a lot of showbiz people's lives Absolutely. so and it's a shame that uh, times have changed and people have moved on and all that and it's a big gym now but i'm, I'm glad the building's still here and all that and i'm glad and honored to be to be here today to celebrate uh, mr corrigan who was a wonderful empresario who uh, gave us you know a chance at the big time really to support all those wonderful people the Tom Jones and Shirley Basses of the world was wonderful for people like me who only come from working men's clubs. Absolutely, no, that's fantastic. Excuse me. Um, well, uh, my earliest memory would be coming to see um, uh, the shows that were on, uh, never thinking that I would actually be on the stage one day. So um, I, I came to see, um, well, lots of people in the, the old days and the compares and uh, uh, that were really good at the jobs like Charlie Williams for instance absolutely um, you know who I loved and later on in life Charlie became a good friend uh, of, of mine uh, you know obviously before he passed away bless him but um, I don't know it's just a, it's iconic hi good afternoon good afternoon so what's your connection with the Batley Variety Club uh, well um, I used to when I was a very young boy uh, I was lucky enough to do a lot of debt for the drummer, you know, right. the regular drummer. And he had a few nights off, I used to come and debt for him. Right, fantastic. And uh, so that put, and put me on, I used to do the working men's clubs in those days, it built up and up and up. Yeah. And then went to the bigger night clubs, and of course this was the biggest, obviously, so when I made it, so I'd made it when I got here. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and that put me on good stead, meeting people and and uh, ended up doing a, <laughs> working with a lot of very famous people. You fantastic, know. it must have been amazing. Oh, it's fantastic, yeah, it really was. All springs to mind when you think of the acts you've performed with or oh. seen at the club? Well, certainly, you know, you, you Shirley Bassey and other people, but Tommy Cooper. Wow. Uh, all the, just, uh, <laughs> the names are just on and on, you know, I mean, Louis Armstrong. Absolutely. Got him over from America. And I, I mean, I was very young then. It was before I was even playing. That right. Was, uh, Amazing. Yeah. And what about today? I mean, how does this make you feel? Fantastic. I mean, it's just, it's just the heritage of. I mean, they've done a phenomenal job in the gym there. You know, I mean, it's, it's still kept the old sort of when I went in there. You know, because I haven't been in since it closed. Wow. You know, uh, because I ended up working you know, all over the country, all over the world. Um, and so when they said, well, we can have a look round, I thought, oh, great. <laughs> I just thought, wow, well, you know what they've done with it, because they, they used to have the hydraulic that's right, stage yeah. coming up and down and all that. Of course, that's all flat now then, but they've, they've kept the bar areas, which, you know, it's sort of, it's still got a lovely feel to it. It's always had a, a really nice, friendly feel in battle. Absolutely. You know, we used to, of course, I, I, it doesn't matter these days, I suppose. But uh, in the day, we had they had the, the band room was upstairs, just right. above the stage. <clears throat> and uh, in those days, there was all the nightclubs going, and of course, it was they used to work till they didn't finish till two o'clock in the morning. Right. And so uh, after that, I mean, we'd do if you were in Sheffield or Bradford or Leeds. Yeah. Uh, we all used to sort of de descend here about three o'clock in the morning and wow. have a good old drink with <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, of course, no. <laughs> but it doesn't matter now, of course. No. But, but those, uh, it was a very happy time, you know. Perfect. Thank you very Super much. Super time. Yeah, you're very welcome. Lovely to meet you. Thank and you. you.